calculators always there will be two inputs at least there will be two inputs one will be carrier one will be message and there will be one output which is the modulated output so these are all those systems are called modulators now this is designing a modulator is not a very big problem always you can design a modulator easily uh, you can always have a modulator or you can have always generate modulation i you will see now why that is possible it is always possible to generate modulation but problem is how not to generate modulation that is the problem you design any circuit any electric electronic circuit that can result in a modulated wave when you are designing a circuit one must ensure that it is not generating a modulated wave unless it is necessary unless absolutely necessary in the design it should not generate a modulation that is the problem always when you are designing a electronic circuit we will just look for some common types of modulators uh, using non linearity one is using non linearity other using multipliers like choppers so you chop off a portion of the uh, signal uh, uh, using multiplication and you generate modulation so you see some of these common uh, types next let us start with uh, modulators using non modulators you know in electronics you use active devices what are active devices diode is a active device transistor is a active device all types of transistors are active device problem is all these or their feature is all of them have a non linear input output characteristics all these devices all electronic active devices their input output characteristics is non linear for example you if you take a diode input to the diode is xt output is yt then always you can approximate this as y, a yt can be approximated as yt is obtained from xt so you can always approximate yt as yt is equal to axt plus bx bx square t you can take higher order terms but we are neglecting the higher order terms at least one or one higher order term you take to just get the information now suppose we have two signals so the two signals are x1t and x2t so x1t is cos omega ct plus mt x2t is cos omega ct minus mt now if we apply x1t and x2t to the nonlinear modulator and look at their difference the difference will be y1t minus y2t depending on x1t and x2t so outputs take the difference of the output so y1t is obtained by taking x1t as the input y2t is obtained by taking x2t as the uh, input take their difference if you take their difference that will give you a cos omega ct plus mt so that is for x1t plus b cos omega ct plus mt square so this you will get for x1t then minus a cos omega ct minus mt minus b cos omega ct minus mt square so if you add these two, two terms that will give you 2a mt plus 4b mt into cos omega ct so the difference is this you can derive this this is very simple mathematics simple algebra you can do this algebra yourself now uh, from uh, what we just saw we got y1t minus y2t is equal to 2 times a into mt plus 4 times b into mt into cos omega c omega c is the angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi u then uh, this term is there omega ct is there 
plus we in, in, in addition to the omega city term we have 2a empty term so another copy of the message signal message signal is empty so in addition to the uh, a carrier signal there is a copy of the message signal in the baseband message signal copy is there now how we do not want this uh, signal this baseband component is to be blocked now we do not want this 2a empty when you are transmitting what you want to transmit is uh, 4b empty into cos omega ct so that is the what we can do in addition to that we have this signal uh, this additional signal at the baseband that we do not want to transmit so how you will do that we will simply use a bandpass filter and stop that so bandpass filter uh, around fct so use the bandpass filter around fct and Okay. Now circuit implementation, you can see what we have done. Empty, empty is given to two devices. So empty is given to the, there is a upper device, there is lower device. In the upper device, we are multiplying empty with cos omega ct. In the lower device also, we are multiplying with cos omega ct. Now, uh, with appropriate uh, phase change, uh, we will get uh, the outputs uh, as uh, empty plus cos omega ct, uh, sorry, cos omega ct plus empty, cos omega ct minus empty as their output. So now they are uh, going through the nonlinear device. Now, nonlinear device has characteristics ax plus bx square. So each of the output goes through that. Then we add them together. When you add them together, the signal that you get is the top one 2a empty for b empty cos omega ct then use the filter bandpass filter around 4b empty cos 2 omega ct uh, so then now uh, we will get the uh, modulated output so this is how you generate modulation using nonlinear device when the nonlinearity is expression ax plus bx square next now in that circuit also you can do one thing, you don't use the bandpass filter because baseband as such is not going to be propagating. Why if you transmit it, baseband will not be transmitted or being low frequency, high frequency antenna will not transmit the low frequency. So uh, by nature, naturally by characteristics of antenna, low frequency will be stopped. Then the other modulator is called the switching modulator. So let us consider what is switching modulator. In switching modulator, what we do is we take the message signal and multiply that by a simple periodic function. So take a periodic function and multiply the, uh, it with the message signal. Suppose omega t is a function, periodic function. It has fundamental frequency fc or omega c. Then omega t can be represented in terms of Fourier series as summation over n minus infinity to infinity dn exponential j omega uh, j omega c n t so that will be how you how you are going to expand omega t into the series now this is a weighted sum of complex exponentials so weights are dn and complex exponential you can see exponential j omega c n t that is the complex exponential so those are have weighted and uh, added. So these are these all these uh, uh, impulses at all multipliers of FC. So if they are all impulses at all multipliers of FC, then multiplying mt with omega t will give us summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity. Dn will be there. Then mt will be because we are multiplying mt. Mt will be there. Mt is not a function of a, therefore it can take Mt within the summation sign. So dn Mt exponential j omega c, j omega c Mt. Now use the convolution theorem. If we use the convolution theorem, the spectrum of Mt omega t will consist of Mf shifted to plus minus Fc plus minus 2 Fc, uh, etc. So all integer multiple uh, pulse of uh, plus minus fc for example suppose 
omega t has 50% duty cycle. So if it has a 50% duty cycle square wave, which is tension product t is equal to 0, then omega t will be equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by pi summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity, 1 by n exponential j uh, omega c infinity. This you know from Fourier series. If you have a square wave, has a square wave pulse of square waves 50, with 50% duty cycle pulse of square wave, that can be represented in Fourier series using this equation. Here n is odd, n even there all coefficients are zero. So n even is not here. Next. So generally, the spectrum of mt into omega wt that will be Fourier transform of mt into wt, so that will be equal to from the Weber equation mf capital mf involved with w. So that will be equal to summation minus infinity to infinity dn capital M f minus nfc. So this you can do easily. You, you, you know if you know Fourier series, this you can do uh, easily. This is metal. Now there are replicas of uh, replicas of the signal at multiples of fc. Once you look at this, this shows from the right hand side. You can see that at multiples of fc. So at fc, two fc, three fc, as n goes up, n is equal to one, two, three, four, etc. So as n goes up at multiples of uh, uh, fc, you will get uh, these replica of the signal. So from that you can choose any of these uh, because the replica of signal is there. So you can take any one of these. So so dn does not happen to be zero so long as dn is not zero. So if for a signal suppose you're two fc. So if for two fc dn is not equal to zero, you can choose two fc. If fc you are choosing, you can choose fc if dn is not zero. That is the only caveat. <coughs> So let us see this modulation method next. So what we have here is the message signal MT, then WT is a constraint. Message signal multiplied by WT will be the bottom figure, left hand side. So Paul strain, its peak is the top is no more flat, but it follows the message signal. So that is what is uh, mt into wt, this much of the difference. Now if you take the Fourier transform, suppose message signal Fourier transform is mf and its shape is this. You can take any shape, mostly people take triangle that is easy to represent any arbitrary signal. Take an mt as arbitrary signal and take a triangle as its uh, uh, mf. That is mostly in utility they use this. So you can take triangle instead of this. Uh, figure, uh, figure, you can take triangles, but it should be centered around here, uh, symmetrically centered around here. That is the caveat. So, with the, uh, that you take. Then, message signal is then WT is a pulse strain. So, once it is a pulse strain, you will get pulses at FC, 2 FC, 0. So, everywhere you will get pulses. So, pulses is uh, the Fourier domain. Then, if you multiply these pulses. Uh, I'll take the convolution of pulses with mf. What you will get is given at the bottom. So let us use a filter. Uh, filter will be around fc. So we can take choose anything, but we will choose uh, fc. So use a filter at uh, around mc, uh, fc. So you will get uh, mf. There, wf mf convolution you will get there. Next. That is the message signal that you are seeing. Now, what is a typical radio receiver? Based on these two, what is a typical radio receiver? Assume that you want to receive a radio signal at FC. FC like uh, uh, 99.6 uh, megahertz uh, or 99.6 kilohertz, 99.6 kilohertz FM or 90.2 FM. So, th those are uh, what is FC. So, if you are trying to listen to that, using amplitude modulation, not FM, using amplitude modulation, then a typical receiver will look like this. 
you have a receiver so you have an antenna to receive this output of the antenna goes to rf filter that is going to another device where you will multiply that with fc minus fi fc is the uh, carrier frequency fi is the transmitter frequency so fc minus fi you multiply with the output of the rf filter that will go to the if filter output of the if filter will be again multiplied by the thing that will go to the detector from the detector you will receive it just connect the detector to your your phone you will receive it so the input rf is at fc this is mixed down uh, to a mixed intermediate frequency fi at the first stage rf filter why we do this because the rf filter is not very selective very selective means it is not very sharp its cut off is not very sharp so it can have a wide bandwidth bandwidth rf filter bandwidths are not very small they are sharp uh, sharp large why the reason is rf is at very high frequency so suppose rf is at 100 megahertz okay so 1% of bandwidth oh, bandwidth for that filter is 1 megahertz whereas at 100 kilohertz 1% is 1 kilohertz so 1 kilohertz you will see the difference between 1 kilohertz and 1 megahertz 10 to the power 3 times there is a difference that is why rf filter is not very safe fast modulation frequency is adjustable if is very selective why if is at a much lower frequency compared to rf so it will be definitely selective even if it is 1% everything from if filter forward onwards they do not change with tuning once you in the design you are, you are tuning the circuit to different frequencies they do not change only changes before that before the if filter because you will have different fc that much next <clears throat> now this is the spectrum uh, of a signal which is received so rf filter is filtering by uh, around fc and then on uh, that uh, after that is filtered that goes to the if filter so uh, it passes through the circuit then it goes to the if filter after the filtering so at the if filter it filters the shaded portion so rf filter now you can see what is what i meant by selectivity rf filter is selecting the shaded portion as well as on shaded portion when you come to the if filter its bandwidth is small so it is selecting only the shaded uh, portion then you do the demodulation so that shaded portion will come to the baseband so rf filter selects some part of the band of interest while if filter selects the signal where you are interested now uh, if you are using software defined medium sdr then you can uh, sample directly instead of ir if filter you don't require if filter you use sampling at the frequency of rf and do the rest in the software so software defined filters those will be done. they will take care now how the frequency translates uh, you will see two examples here one is called super heterodyne so super heterodyne receiver and this sub heterodyne receiver uh, now in the sub heterodyne receiver you have it, uh, the signal at plus minus fc in the super heterodyne receiver also you have the signal at plus minus fc in both the cases you have um, fc with the you, you have from your carrier signal uh, sorry from your local oscillator you have or if oscillator you have fc minus f1 signal or impulses at fc minus f1 there also you have impulses at fc uh, uh, sorry on uh, fc minus f1 one is on f minus fc minus f1 other is fc minus f1 whereas in super heterodyne transistor it is minus of fc plus f1 and fc plus f1 so these are the the location after the if filter is this fc minus f1 or fc plus f1 for super heterodyne it is fc plus f1 so you increase it and increase by the amount of fc is increased by 
F1 by the intermediate frequency, whereas in sub heterodyne Fc is decreased by the intermediate frequency, so Fc minus F1. Then you take the difference of these two, in the top uh, figure and uh, lower figure, then you uh, do the conversion. So top one and uh, lower one, once they are controlled, then you will find F1, uh, the shaded portion of F1 and the unshaded portion of F1, F Fi, uh, like this, like the left one for the sub heterodyne. For the super heterodyne, you will get the shaded portion on the left hand side or at minus F5 and the unshaded portion at F5. So now, to keep track of what is happening, one of the bands uh, is actually here shaded in gray. Uh, so, this way, uh, uh, otherwise, both are same. Both the bands are same. Both of them produce the same eigen signal. Next. Now we have seen uh, DSBSC. Now we will come to AM modulation, amplitude modulation or simple DSB modulation. <coughs> DSB modulation or uh, amplitude modulation. The, the AM modulation, this is a form of amplitude modulation in which mu is greater than 0. What is mu? I will tell you later. But for the time being, Remember that mu is called uh, modulation index. So modulation index is greater than zero. We will discuss about modulation index a little bit later after two three slides. So modulation index is greater than zero. Now ST or the signal is equal to in this case ST is equal to AC plus MT all into cos 2 pi FC. So this is the modulated signal. AC plus MT into cos 2 pi. Uh, FCT that you can write as AC if you take AC common then it will be AC into 1 plus mu times MT into cos omega CT. So, uh, uh, so this is uh, what is this signal, modulated signal. Now for this signal to be transmitted you require a bandwidth of MT, MT's bandwidth should be much less than FC not F bandwidth of FC, FC, what is FC, that should be, FC carrier frequency should be much larger than the bandwidth of the uh, uh, message signal and the modulation index should be less than equal to 1, less than 1, in this case modulation index is less than 1, for AM modulation, modulation index is less than 1. Now what will be its spectrum once you look at the above one, now AC uh, there are two terms AC cos omega CT plus uh, AC MT cos omega CT. So, for AC cos omega CT, the terms are Fourier transforms are AC by 2 delta F plus minus FC. So, that is for that. For the cos time or uh, uh, MT, once you multiply MT, so this will be AC into mu by 2 M of F plus minus FC. So, those are the two terms. So, you can see the spectrum below, the top one, the top uh, spectrum shows you AC high into delta F plus mu into MA. So that shows you AC into delta F means delta F is a impulse function that is at the origin. So that is at the origin of S band origin. So F is equal to 0, that is where it will exist, otherwise it will not exist. So at F is equal to 0, it exists. So, at f is equal to 0, you can see there is a bold arrow in indicating AC delta f. Amplitude of that arrow is AC. Then, around that, we have mu times AC into mf. So, those two triangle like things, these are AC times mu or AC into mu into mf. That is the uh, signal, original signal. Now, once you have modulated it in the modulated signal you will get the one which is below because of the convolution everything will shift to plus minus fc. So the <coughs> impulse will go to plus minus fc and the other parts will be distributed around it. Only thing is it will be half. So amplitude will be reduced by half because of convolution. Next. 
Now look at uh, the difference between BSBSC and amplitude uh, modulation. Main difference is they undergo this uh, BSBSC that we discussed, they undergo phase reversal. When MT changes and if MT is changing sign, then they will go undergo phase reversal. If MT is not changing sign, no problem. But if it changes sign, they will undergo phase reversal. And it is difficult to extract the carrier from the receive signal. That you can see the, the top one shows you uh, empty, which is from plus one to minus one. So the, it changes sign. So top, uh, peak is plus one, negative peak is minus one. So there is a change in sign. Because there is a change in sign, change in sign, you can see what has happened to the modulated wave. Now modulated wave is no more a replica of the modulating wave. The, uh, if you join the peaks of the modulated wave, that is not going to give you the replica of the modulating wave. That is uh, the problem. So that this is the main problem. Phase reversal of empty, when empty changes sign. Next. In AM, amplitude modulation or DSV, uh, the carrier signal is modulated by AC plus MT. So AC into 1 plus mu MT, that is what is modulating. So mu is equal to 1, that is the maximum value, or mu is equal to 0 0.5. So now you, you can see mu is equal to 1, mu is equal to 0 0.5. These two are, uh, these two figures are there. Top figure is mu is equal to 1, bottom figure is mu is equal to 0 0.5. In both the cases, if you join the peaks uh, by a dashed line, that will be resembling the <coughs> original signal or the message signal. So that will be advantage with amplitude modulation. Next. Now, as I told you now, uh, up to this point we have discussed that if we connect these uh, peaks of the modulated signal, that gives you the, the shape of that connecting line, dash line that we have seen, that gives you, the, that resembles the original signal or the message signal. So that is called the envelope of the modulated uh, wave. We have to detect that envelope. If you detect the envelope, you have detected the original signal. So that is called envelope detection of amplitude modulated signal. The term detection means extracting the signal from the received data or received signal. In some cases, this also is called demodulation. Suppose Xt is the signal that you are receiving and it is written as Xt is equal to Pt into cos omega ct. It is varying slowly compared to the omega ct. Then absolute of Ct is called the envelope of the Xt. If its variation is small, which means if frequency of Et is very small compared to omega ct, then absolute of Et is the envelope of the Et mathematically. Analytically, I have explained this is mathematical. Now, for envelope detection to work, you require Fc to be much greater than the bandwidth of Mt, uh, unless it is much greater than the bandwidth of Mt, positive and negative spectral components will overlap and you cannot separate them. And this is condition 1, there are two conditions. Second condition is A plus Mt should be greater than equal to 0. Unless this is this happens, then there will be phase reversal. When A plus Mt is less than 0, there will be phase reversal. Again, you cannot detect. So two conditions are there. Now let me define what is modulation index. Some books write, is, uh, write it as uh, mu. Most of the books write it as mu. Now first what we will do is we will define uh, maximum deviation of Mt from 0. So from 0 how what is the maximum deviation of Mt. So that is Mt that is maximum of absolute of Mt. The modulation index of the modulated signal is defined as mu which is equal to mp by a. What is mp? mp is the maximum of the uh, absolute of mp. And what is a? a is the maximum of the carrier. 
therefore amplitude of the modulating signal by amplitude of the carrier signal is also made. So the larger the modulation index, the lower is the power, but it becomes uh, the demodulation ahead of So if you want low power transmission, you can go for high modulation index, what that will uh, reduce the demodulation. That will make demodulation difficult. Usually, broadcast amplitude uh, stations, radio stations, uh, AM radio stations, their modulation index is close to 1. And now uh, keeping them close to 1, so the hum power will be reduced, so gain will be reduced. So input signals are controlled using automatic gain control. So AGC used, is used in the AM broadcast stations. Next. Uh, this gives an example. Uh, in this, you can see uh, the uh, signal, uh, received signal with modulation index. You can see that the carrier, when it is keyed on and off, so the first transmission has a much higher modulation index, the left one. After that, the modulation index goes down compared to the second one. Now, uh, the, after that, the next one goes down. Why this happens? That is the question. Think of this. If you cannot find the answer, ask me in the next class. Why this happens? Next. Now I will give you the circuit of an envelope detector. Now we know what is envelope and what is the circuit. Envelope detector circuit is the most simple circuit. Use a rectifier, full wave rectifier. So we have the full wave rectifier. To the full wave rectifier, you give the input as uh, A, A plus MT into cos omega uh, CP. Then take the output from that and pass that through a RC filter. Now, full wave rectifier means half or lower half will be cut off automatically, only DC component will give. Now, this DC, DC component will be fluctuating, they will be fluctuating with frequency FC. Now, what will happen? Look at this uh, figure, uh, bottom left figure. Uh, at the left portion, when the wave reaches its peak, the capacitor will be charged. Then, uh, when it goes to the negative half cycle, so the capacitor there is, in, uh, when it goes to the negative half cycle, that half cycle is not there. So, capacitor is not going to be charged. What will happen? the capacitor will discharge. It will discharge through the R. So it will start decaying the uh, value of the voltage across the capacitor or across the resistor will start decaying from the peak value first. Then by the time it has decayed to some level, the second peak will come. So by the se time second peak will come there, again the capacitor will charge to the second peak. Then it will decay, then it will come, then it will decay. So you will get ultimately something like a sort of wave uh, which is filtered out. RC filter filters out sort of wave, small ripples or you can say you got an AC with small ripples and this AC is following the envelope of the gas tube. That is how what happens here. And after that you can do additional filtering and uh, get the original AC. Next. So this uh, shows uh, experiments from experiments or so so so. uh, these are actually generated using these uh, MATLAB so you can use MATLAB and uh, generate this and see this, uh, this example. So I am not going to go through this example. Cat whisker radio is uh, actually a crystal radio uh, uh, which was used uh, to receive radio frequency in the early age, so particularly during the World War, or World War II, this was in use. Next. Then we will come to the power components available in the AM signal, what is the power? The power of uh, AM signal is the sum of the power of two components. What are the two components? One is the carrier component, other is the sideband components. Carrier component is K cos omega C. Sideband components are a, MT into cos omega CT. So, you can write that, sorry, uh, 
carrier component is A cos omega CT uh, and the sideband component is MT cos omega CT. So, these are the two components which are present there. The carrier and sideband signals, they are orthogonal. You can see there are two percent functions, percent function is orthogonal to itself. So, ca ca the carrier and the sideband signals, they are orthogonal. So, since they are orthogonal, so they are power free line. So, the, uh, the carrier power is PC, PC is the uh, C for carrier, E for power. So, how to calculate power? Power will be A square amplitude square integrated 0 to T, oh, oh, 1 period, T is 1 period, cos square 2 pi F C T D. So, if you integrate that, that will give you 1 by 2. Uh, so, uh, PC is equal to 1 by 2 S C square. Signal, sig uh, signal power. Uh, after modulation is half the original message power. So, PS, PS, S is for signal. So, PS is equal to 1 by 2 PM. M is for message. So, PS is equal to 1 by 2 PM. Now, uh, for finding out PM, what we have done is the message power is averaged over T. So, as T goes uh, or becomes larger, T it is average. So, PM is equal to average of M square T which is equal to 1 by t integration t0 to t0 plus t m square t dt. Now, uh, if the power uh, of a code, so code means say you know uh, harmonic, so first harmonic, second harmonic, these are called tones. Uh, of a tone is cos omega mt, then the power is half. Tone is cos omega mt, power will be always half. Next. Now, uh, we will continue with that. The carrier tone, that simplifies modulation but carries no information. So, in designing a modulation circuit or the, uh, dealing with modulation, the carrier simplifies the modulation but it does not carry any information. So, the power efficiency of a modulator is defined as eta which is equal to the useful power by total power. Now, here what is the useful power? Useful power is the power in the signal. So, PS. What is total power? Power in the signal plus power in the carrier. So, divided by PC plus PS. So, that you can write as PS is equal to uh, power is uh, M square T uh, average. Then, PC power is A square. PS power again is M square T average. Now, let us consider an example. Uh, consider the tone modulation, this is called tone modulation when uh, 0 is less than mu is less than 1 and mt is equal to mu cos omega c t. Then eta is equal to 1 by 2 mu a whole square by 2 divided by a square by 2 plus half mu a whole square by 2. So that will be mu square by 2 plus mu for tone modulation. Now what is the maximum value of mu? It is 1. So if I put uh, mu is equal to 1, eta is equal to 1 by 2. So, that is uh, the maximum value of eta is 1 by 2. So, efficiency increases with mu and it maximum value is 1 by 2. Now, it rapidly decreases. As you decrease the mu, it will rapidly decrease. So, for mu is equal to 0 0.5, eta is equal to 1 by 9. So, AM is inefficient both in power and both in bandwidth. In both the cases, it is inefficient because of this. Next. Uh -huh. Next. Now we will come to what is called single sideband. This was the important part that I wanted to discuss before wrapping up. Now, DSBSC is spectrally inefficient. Why it is spectrally inefficient? Because it uses twice the bandwidth of the message. Now look at this figure. The left hand side shows you the bandwidth of the message. So message, spectrum of the message is there. So bandwidth, suppose its bandwidth is from minus F1 to plus F1. So that is the bandwidth, let us say, for the uh, baseband signal. Now when it is modulated, it's Frequency domain representation or spectral representation is shown on the right hand side. The power is half, 
for each band but each band has a bandwidth from minus f1 to f1 so bandwidth is uh, f1 minus f1 now for the left one for the right one also the bandwidth is f1 minus uh, f1 so uh, sorry uh, f1 plus f1 or f2 minus f1 f2 minus f1 which is two times f2 minus f1 base band bandwidth was f2 minus f1 modulated bandwidth is 2 f2 minus 2 f1 so there are two bands so two bands there are two bands so more bandwidth therefore it is a waste of bandwidth when you transmit this it is a waste of bandwidth frequency in it is simply you are using what we can do is we can reconstruct the original signal either from the upper side band you can see there are two side band two two sets one is seated one is white the seated portion is called upper side band white portion is called the lower side band. so either go for the upper side band or go for the lower side band and receive the upper side band both the upper side bands and receive or receive both the lower side bands so if you combine both the lower side band that will give you the original signal if you combine both the upper side band that will also give you the original signal so that is a very good technique that we can employ for efficient use of bandwidth next so that is shown here a uh, double side band is the top one two side bands upper side band is you can see uh, the middle one is upper side band lower one is the lower side band bottom one is the lower side band now you feel see the upper side bands to the uh, origin or the lower side bands to the origin you can always see that you are going to get that to original signal now lower side band you don't confuse with the lower side band when you shift the fc component to the origin it will be on the left of the origin when you shift minus fc component that will be on the right of the uh, origin therefore you will get back the original signal okay next now we consider the modulation and demodulation of ssb this can be transmitted using the same principle of dsb sc modulator uh, with a narrower band pass filter so for usb upper side band the center frequency will be uh, fc tilde that is the center frequency now original center frequency is fc now what we will do is instead of transmitting fc we will transmit fc tilde which is fc plus half the bandwidth and the cut off frequency is by 2 so capital b is the uh, uh, twice the cut off frequency now if you have a band pass filter that band pass filter must roll off quickly to eliminate the unwanted contribution from the other side band other side band means lower side band usb lsb we are using a usb so lsb contribution should be uh, filtered out completely so therefore band pass filter should be around the upper side band only and that will pass message frequencies near zero those will be affected by non ideal filters if you don't have ideal filters that is going to affect the message frequency near zero because that will not be filtered out so that will be uh, additional component will be there giving to jitters ssb demodulation that can use dsb sc demodulator with no change so only thing is input to the low pass filter is different from the dsb sc in this case now which side band you have to use transmitter and receivers must agree on using lsb versus usb if transmitter is using usb receiver must use uh, usb if transmitter is using lsb receiver must use lsb ssb is uh, used in amateur radio below 10 uh, megahertz you have lsb above 10 megahertz you have usb uh, exceptions for 5 megahertz at 5 megahertz you have usb and for digital modes you have usb ssb also common in short wave radio transmission so 120 meter or uh, which is 2300 to 2495 kilohertz lsb 90 meter which is 3200 to 3400 kilohertz lsb 
so these are all given here so you who can know what is your radio which side band it is using next now this shows you the ssb modulation process uh, see you have a single side band filter the top one shows you the single side band filter only one side band is filter other is uh, allowed to pass one is no uh, Uh, allowed to pass through the filter, other is filtered out. Then, you know, after filtering, you get a single sideband signal, which is the second figure from top. Then, in the third figure, you have uh, you are modulating the carrier, so you are going to FC. That is, the signal is shifted to FC. In the fourth, uh, you are taking only the real part of FC. So that much is next. in the demodulation you start from the last uh, waveform so this is the received spectrum around fc then demodulate the uh, demodulate it to the baseband so it comes back towards the baseband uh, how do you do that by convolving it again you convolve as in case of dsdc here also you convolve it with the original carrier frequency then uh, take the real part so if you take the real part you will get back the original signal. Ideally, you require a sequence modulator in this case. Practi in practice, FC is estimated by the sound of the signal. Error of 50 Hz is usually noticeable in SSB modulation. Now let us see HSB SSB in the time domain. Now let us do a time domain analysis. Time, and then we start. So the upper side band is the output of filtering. A modulated signal in T cos omega CT with an ideal bandpass filter. That is what we have done. So we have got the modulated signal in T cos omega CT. We pass that through ideal bandpass filter. Bandpass filter. So H SSB will be that will be two if F is greater than zero, zero if F is less than zero. So that is the bandpass filter. So based on that, you can say. H S S B is equal to two times U F. This this is same as the above. The first equation and the second equation equal because U is unit step function. So it is zero below F is equal to zero. One uh, above F is equal to zero. So the first one and this one is same. And uh, okay, I don't have the figure here. The impulse response of this figure. Uh, so if you take the inverse Fourier transform of this. That will give you the inverse response. So H S S B T will be a inverse Fourier transform of two U F. Next. Now uh, uh, to find out that we require to use something called Hilbert transform. So Hilbert transform we know U T Fourier transform is one by two delta T plus one by two uh, omega. If uh, using duality. And multiplying by two, you will get delta t plus j by uh, pi t. That will be uh, for each for for in the Fourier domain, it will be two u a. So the impulse response of the filter will be h s s b t. That will be delta t plus j by pi t. If m t is the input signal, then the single side side band signal will be how much m t into h s s b t. So that will be mt convolved with HSSBT. So that will be equal to mt convolved with delta t plus j by pi t because HSSBT is equal to delta t plus j by pi t. So to that take that convolution, that convolution is mt convolved with delta t is mt. mt convolved with j by pi t is is remains as mt j into mt convolved with one by pi t. That is what we have to find. Out. This last part. Mt convolved with one by pi t. This is called the Hilbert transform of Mt. So the last term is the Hilbert transform of Mt. Mt into one by pi t. That is Mhc Hilbert transform of Mt. Next. This is an example of Hilbert transform. The transform function of a Hilbert transform is a h of h t. H t is for Hilbert transform. H t of a. This is equal to minus j sigma f. Now sigma f is it is one for f greater than zero 
and uh, sorry, uh, minus one for uh, one for a greater than zero, minus one for a less than zero. So one into minus j that gives you minus j, and minus one into minus j that gives you j. So h of h t is equal to minus j when f is greater than zero, j when f is less than zero. If you plot it, you will see that if f is less than zero, it is minus j. If f is greater than zero, it is plus j. So that is the plot. Now, if m t is equal to cos omega c t, or m t is equal to sin omega c t, what will happen? That you have to find. Now, block diagram. You can see the block diagram for our Hilbert transform is m t. Then it goes to h t. Multiply m t with h t. Multiply that with j. Of scale it by an amount of j, then add m t with this scale amount that gives you m of s s b t. So with that, we come to the end of our discussion on amplitude modulation. So what we discussed today, I am going to send you these slides or the handout. I'll send you the handouts of what we have discussed, and uh, maybe next time we'll have a this quiz on what we have discussed. If you have questions or any 